Over the last few weeks, I've been really trying to focus on improving the groundwork for my little island game. One of the ways I've done this is I've made editors for all the different types of like objects that you could find in the world, as well as any items that you might pick up, and that lets me like super easily edit and create different items. This is all built on the groundwork from Odin Inspector, which is a asset that kind of handles all the serialization and also custom inspectors for you. So the, basically, the way it works is that you have like an item or object definition. This is stored in the editor. And then when you place it in the world, um, because it has to be tied to a game object, you also kind of have this like game object entity that kind of controls its runtime behavior. So whether or not it's uh, able to be picked up or if it's able to be grabbed or if it's like a light source. And then you also have like some kind of data that's stored inside of that object that can be saved and loaded so that next time you load up the scene, it knows what kind of entity to create. It knows um, what its conditions are. Like if it was a fireplace, it might have like fuel remaining. Um, and it also has a link to the definition that tells you like static information about the object, like its icon or its name or its description. Uh, this system can sound a little convoluted. The main kicker for me is that I want to be able to place objects in the scene still, whilst also being able to save and load them. And you have to kind of give up some simplicity in order to do that with Unity. So this month I spent a lot of time trying to make a planning tool, because one of the things I've been struggling with is keeping all my design thoughts and ideas in one place. I love PureF for uh, images because it lets you have this expansive infinite 2D grid and you can just put whatever you want on there and it just works. Uh, I actually found halfway through my, like making a giant app to do this all for me, I found diagrams.net that basically does exactly what I want. It's an infinite grid, you can have nodes and you can connect them using uh, arrows and things like that, you can have text, you can even have GIFs. And I basically converted most of my design documents that were on paper or on like weird Google Docs um, into this uh, diagrams.net document. The only thing I miss, weirdly enough, is uh, when I have Trello, I normally like attach a little GIF onto the Trello task when I'm done, and I haven't been using Trello now, so I kind of miss that ability to kind of see this visual representation of all the stuff I've done. Otherwise, it kind of feels like I do nothing, even though I do uh, quite a lot. So I also managed to work in water movement, which I was really happy with. The way it works is that you have two opposing forces, um, weight pushing you downwards and buoyancy pushing you upwards, and when one is larger than the other you get an acceleration in that direction. The only issue is obviously if you keep going in and out of water you can just bob forever because there's no loss of kind of energy between the forces, um, so you also need to add like a little multiplier just to slow yourself down so eventually you kind of bob to a standstill. So the last feature I got really excited about was uh, special items, and these are items around the islands that basically enhance your exploration capabilities. And the one I put in first was a compass, and this basically kind of gives you like a Skyrim style um, indication of where nearby islands would be. And I thought this would be really useful um, for people who aren't really sure like where they visited, where they need to go next, and things like that. I think there's a bit of contention about being led by the nose to everything, and then just finding things on your own. And I think there's a bit of a beauty to either of them. I think in Skyrim, being able to see nearby locations makes you actually want to go out and explore, but there's also a charm in a lot of games to finding something that you didn't expect, and it's just there. So I think trying to combine both of those into the system might be something that I have to wrestle with in the future. So I'm currently in the process of tinkering with house upgrades, being able to like build your house up, build the island you start on up, and build things like docks so you can build ships to explore, cool things like that. So the couple of tutorial videos I put out I've really enjoyed doing. I noticed a Reddit thread recently talking about how they wish more tutorials would kind of go into the design aspects of things. So I'm also thinking about in the future maybe making a like complete build a certain thing series, but then also having like more detailed like how do you design like a dungeon or um, a different like systems that you would need to implement in the game. As always, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of this dumb stuff, be sure to subscribe. And uh, yeah, I hope everything with you is going great. I'll see you next time.